other businesses who will want to watch it back afterwards. Okay, so if we make a start and then I will let anyone else in as and when they would like to join. Um, so good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome back to the Big Breakfast. So we had a little bit of a break last month. Um, as I say, please do bear with me. We're having the office painted and I've got all the windows open here on the way, so that is what that is. Um, and today we are rejoined, I should say, by the um, potential developers of the former cinema site um, who would like to update you today on the plans and also how they can engage with town centre businesses um, moving forwards. So if I hand straight over to you um, and the team, would you like to introduce yourself? I don't know who's going to lead on that today. Thank you very much. Yes, yeah, so, so I'll, I'll kick off. Actually, before we start, Sarah Jane, I just wanted to check how long do we have um, as long as you'd like, well, these are booked in for an hour. We haven't got anything else to cover today, so um... okay. it, it needn't take that long. But I think we're happy to take that long. But um, uh, there's um, we we won't we we do have a presentation. But we won't um, take up too much time on that day. But um, yeah, so I will. Um, I think last time we presented to you all was end of April, I believe. Um, so yeah, where uh, the scheme has um, evolved and moved on since then. Um, so I'll start off just by introducing the three of us who are here uh, from uh, the Town Villages team. So I'm Gabriel uh, Abulafia, um, and I'm from Redwood Consulting, assisting the Town Villages uh, with uh, engaging the local community. Um, Caroline, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah. Hi, good morning, everyone. I'm Caroline Keeler. I'm a development manager working for Retirement Villages Group. And Charlie? Mm -hmm. Sorry, I should have, uh, yeah, not just unmuted myself then, so there was an echo. Um, morning, everybody. Uh, yeah, Charlie Gilmartin helping Gabriel uh, and Caroline on this application. So thank you very much. So we're going to, uh, I'm going to start with a very uh, quick update. So then uh, Caroline will take you through uh, just some some specifics of the scheme, uh, including the sort of the, the, the new bits and the things that's moved on. And then we had a, a couple of uh, we're going to round off with a couple of questions actually that we had just to um uh by, by way of ongoing sort of understanding of uh, the position of um local businesses so i think the first thing i was going to say was that the application has now been submitted um it's actually been sub submitted and registered um and i believe that means so the council will be undertaking its own uh consultation which i think will be run until early september um, Sarah Jane, after, after this meeting, I think what I might do is I'll email you the application reference number just so that people can uh, and, and and also link to the bit on the website where you can find it just so you, you can look at all of the all of the details of the um, the application there. Um, yeah, so so uh, so uh, so that's that and I believe that's been covered by some of the local papers as well. Um, so I think that that was the the. the, the the main bit of news from our side, but I think maybe Caroline, if I hand over to you so that you could um, just take us through some more details of the scheme. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. I will just share my screen. Okay. Can everyone see hopefully? Uh, yeah, um, can see that Caroline. Yeah, great. Excellent. Let me just move this. Um. So good morning. So thank you for inviting us to speak again today. Um, as Gabriel said, I think the last time we presented to you was in April. So the scheme has moved on a little bit since then, um, but you'll be quite familiar with some of it. Um, and we've now submitted it to the council, but I'll just take you through sort of the key changes um, and then we'll open the floor to discussions and also how we can work together with you um, on the application. So this site's just to, as a reminder of where the where the site is. So we're on the corner of Mount Pleasant Road and Church Road opposite the town hall. Um, this is, a, it looks a little bit more overgrown at the moment, but as you can see, this is the site in its current form. Um, and as a reminder, our proposal for the site is for an integrated retirement community. So Retirement Villages Group is a specialist developer operator of retirement communities, and we've been running um, around 16 villages throughout England for over 40 years now. So uh, the scheme 
um, in its current form is 166 one and two bedroom apartments, um, which are for retirement living. Um, and we're also providing over 12,000 square foot of amenity space, the majority of which will also be open to the public. Um, the development will be arranged over four buildings, you can see here, and these will all be focused around the central public courtyard, which is also the route for the public right of way, which runs from Mount Pleasant Road here, all the way through to Clamricard Road here. On top of this, we are delivering nine retail units along Mount Pleasant Road here, and also two on the corner of um, Church Road and Mount Pleasant here, and I'll go into that in more detail in a little bit. Um, but the intention is for those retail units to be to make to be marketed to local businesses. Um, so as an update on some of the design changes, the first one I want to talk to you about is the changes to the retail units along Mount Pleasant Road. So previously uh, we had oh, sorry, moving along. Previously we had four retail units which ran along along Mount Pleasant and um, completed that street scene. These were quite large format units, which I think would work really well. But what we've done um, since we presented previously is actually split up the floor plates so they can be split into up to seven units on this, this bit and another two on the corner. But basically what this means is we can attract more prospective tenants because there's an opportunity to either have seven smaller units or up to four larger units. Um, another change here, oh, just to show the CGI, so this is a CGI looking up Mount Pleasant Road, um, which shows kind of our intention of what these units might look like. Above the units, we've got a resident terrace and then some residential apartments. Um, okay, the other um, change we want to talk to you about is on the key corner elevation. So again, since we saw you previously, this has changed from this design here, which has got, it was up to eight stories. We've actually lowered the floor by one story and we've um, spread the massing out a bit along this edge. So it's a little bit more balanced. And this was uh, in response to quite a few consultation comments we received. So that's how the design looks there. And I'll just take you to some CGI's. So this is the previous scheme when it was up at eight storeys looking at the building from the town hall. And now this is a our current proposal. So this is the slightly lower, lower storey, one less storey um, from looking down towards Mount Pleasant. And again, that's the same CGI looking through from the town hall. So the other thing just to take you through is the um, proposal for the amenity space. So this has changed a little bit since we last saw you, but the intention is the same. The focus is on, um, so we've got the courtyard here, which I'll go through in a bit more detail, but we've got an, a number of different uses. So there's a, a spa um, with hydrotherapy pool, scenarium and treatment rooms. We've also got a gym and studio on the floor above, which I'll show you the floor plan in a second. Um, we've got a restaurant here with private dining facilities. We have a large multi-function room here. So there's a reception area and the multi-use room. And this basically, um, you can break it down into different spaces. So depending on the needs, uh, we can have a smaller meeting room or open it up as a one large space. Uh, we've also got different uses for, which are more specific for our residents. So we've got a domiciliary care, healthcare suite, um, and we will also have a a private resident lounge on the upper floor um, and here we've got our admin area which has got 24-hour presence on site and also our emergency care responding. So that's the focus on this level. Um, we are intending that this is open to the public so it'll be accessible for public use. How that works entirely we'd like to discuss with you in a little bit more detail um, but the intention is yeah that it, it will be open to the public depending on who would like to use it. Um, this is the courtyard. So the, the courtyard basically is part of the public right of way, which runs from, like I said, down here is Mount Pleasant Road and it goes up to a Clamricard Road here. And there's quite a change of level across the site. So we've worked this into the design um, and we've got a courtyard that spills out from the restaurant. So that can be an, a nice outdoor space to sit. But we've also got these sort of features which um, we'll be able to use for some sort of events and outdoor space. 
here is the upper ground floor so you can go into the reception downstairs and then enter the lift and make your way up to this floor and on this floor there will be the studio gym um, and also two further retail units one of which will the intention is to use as our sales suite when we first open the development and here's just an idea of that key corner so what it will look like from this is looking at the the corner from the town hall towards towards the building um, and as you can see we've got quite a lot of level change to deal with so we're landscaping it in this sort of terrace way to make that much softer softer corner and finally i just want to show you a bit more of our intention for that courtyard space so again it's something we'd like to discuss with with you but also with other local groups how we can use that space to the, its maximum effect but um We've done some studies here just to show how the space could you be used for sort of outdoor cinema screenings, maybe markets or a stage of some sort of theatre performance. So we really want this space to be somewhere that the community can use as well as be enjoyed by our residents. Um, just some images of how it might look. So yeah, that's um, that's really the summary of the changes. Um, and I will probably hand back to to Gabriel to take you through the next bit. Thank you. Um, I think the the next bit was just really uh, we anticipated there, there might be some questions on what Caroline has just pre uh, presented. Uh, we actually had a few things that we were hoping to discuss and we can either go through these questions now or we can take them away and you can you can email us afterwards. Um, we were we have in, in previous phases of our consultation, we have received comments from more than one uh, local business about how the site is, at the moment, it, it sort of it, it sort of breaks up uh, the town centre and it sort of, you know, it, it needs sort of redevelopment on it to sort of help knit it back together again. Uh, and obviously, Retirement Village is hopes for the chance to be able to do that. We were uh, hoping uh, to have a discussion on ways in which Retirement Villages could work with local businesses just to maximise the benefits for the town centre. Um, <clears throat> I wasn't going to sort of put too many uh, sort of uh, sort of words into in words into your mouths or sort of suggestions. But, you know, we're thinking about how, for example, could we work together to encourage further footfall, additional visit visits um, and things like that. So we, we thought we would just begin clear. This discussion can be ongoing, but we thought that particularly given the application is now in, it was worth uh, beginning that dialogue now. So uh, I'd be happy to take any thoughts on that or indeed any thoughts on the scheme itself uh, as Caroline has just presented it. Anyone have any thoughts? Are there many local businesses on here, Sarah Dane? Uh, there normally are a lot more than this, but they will watch it back afterwards. Am I am I the only no, you're representative? Not. No, 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 not at all. So we've got um, okay. Stephanie um, from Camden Road. Um, we've got from um, Fenwick. Okay. We've got, um, well, got Emma, I... Claudia from Monson Road. Not not just you, John. <laughs> I, I didn't hear the uh, April uh, presentations. This is all new to me. It looks just amazing, really good. And there is a problem. So I'm in what you could call the new town and I used to be in what you could call the old town um, and the difference. And it's just got worse and worse uh, as uh, as the years go by. Um, my only two things would be um, there's such a, a glut of empty retail units that it's going to be difficult to fill those units. Um, and my other thought would be if you're moving into a retirement village, is community events like a, a cinema the sort of thing you'd want going on in your retirement village? Oh, shall I respond to that? The retirement village yes, yes. comment. Um, so, John, thank you for your your comments. Um, our, at RVG, we have the majority of our villages currently are kind of more rural, and the strategy now is to take it more into town centres. Even in our rural villages, we are 
there's a definitely a push and people are very open to incorporating the community more and the thing um the thing is it's a really nice partnership when you bring the community in a lot of our residents while it's retirement we're not a care home so that people might need an element of care but we have very active residents they might be a bit older but they're still very active really active in society really got lots of different interests and a lot to a lot they want to do and um give back so our intention for Tunbridge Wells we're not going to be attracting anyone here who wants a quiet life and doesn't want to talk to anyone if they want to be in the town centre it's because they want to benefit from being right on the doorstep of, of all the restaurants the everything that's going on we're right opposite Trinity Theatre so we think it'll be even more than our other villages will be attracting a really active community and as part of that we run a huge program of events for our residents so it'd be really nice to have some of those events are actually much more focused on community events and using the space we're providing. So I think it will be a really, a really good space and people want to be taking part. Yeah, sounds uh, excellent. Good luck. And I, I think what, one thing I would add to that is there's um, uh, we we have actually this is on the recommendation of one of your um, uh, ward local councillors, Justine Rutland. Uh, she recommended that we get in touch with the the various organisers of local festivals uh you know because she says that space is always you know it's always something they could do with so we have had a discussion with a lady from the fringe festival i believe we're in the process of um i think it's the poetry festival we're in the process of arranging a meeting with them i think that's going to be early september and there are a couple of others as well so that that's just an example of the kind of local connections that we hope to establish to you know uh, uh with with activities that are already ongoing I, I just wanted to say hello. I'm Emma from Chamberlain Court Care Home up the road in Mount Ephraim. Um, so I can say that there's definitely a demand um, for residential. Um, not only do I have a, we're full, I have a long waiting list of people coming into residential care, but need a little bit more additional care that they would have in one of your villages. But I, um, I work quite closely with, I don't think there's anybody on here from Audley, um, McCarthy and Stone, where they're, um, their residents when they get to a point where they do need care that they then would look for a care home so I work quite mm. closely um, with them so I'm quite excited to to hear about this and also the recreation facilities whilst a lot of our residents may have some mobility challenges that they need support with we take them out um, we take them on boat trips we take them to the theatre we take them to garden centres an outdoor theatre or cinema uh, but though we have our own cinema here, it's indoors. So I, I think there's the, you know, there'd be great opportunities to to work together. Um, just a question. Is there anybody else bidding for this space out of interest do you, that you know of? So what do you mean by bidding for the is, space? Is there another person that is has put in a plan for the space? So it's now, so it's just going to be retirement villages group. We, yeah. we don't yet own the site, but we have a yeah. subject to planning deal. So yes. yeah. if we get planning, it, it's ours and we'll, we will be delivering the development. So yeah. do you have an estimated completion? Which year is it? Tw uh, 2025. I believe 25. It is. Yeah. Okay. yeah. That's yeah. all. Thank so, you. Thank you, Emma. Um, John, in response to your other thing about your other comment about um, empty retail units, it, it's outside of my area of expertise. Is that something that has the, the the empty retail units? Has that been exacerbated by COVID? Is that a um, is there are there other things that are worth our just passing on to um, RBG sales team? It has been exacerbated by COVID in terms of I think some of the bigger chains of, of have struggled. Um, th th there does seem to be sort of signs of the tide turning in the, the new town in terms of there's a couple of couple of major chains that are opening. Um, but the, if you if you go to Tunbridge Wells High Street and, and Pantiles, but especially the High Street, it's just thriving, absolutely thriving. Whereas the new town isn't. So it it's excellent that, that there's something that looks like it's a really good plan for that site but it might take some really clever thinking to fill those units which is what it will need because what you don't need is a load more empty units which will even further sort of exacerbate the 
the difference between the old and the new town. OK. Yeah, so the, the proposal is that they'll be flexible within use mm -hmm. classes, E, sui generis, beauty uses and drinking uses. But uh, we, we're slightly limited on restaurant use just because of the amount of um, uh, systems you'd need. But so sort of lighter uses than that. Uh, just in terms of the kind of spa gym area, so that would be open to the general public and um, sorry, I didn't introduce myself. <laughs> Sarah is from Tunbridge Wells Borough Council. I work in the economic development team. Um, so Visit Tunbridge Wells is one of my kind of main um, areas and that's the tourist information for the borough. Um, so in terms of kind of spa and gym, I was wondering if you, obviously you might not have gone that far, but you might want to think about doing day passes because we don't really have a kind of spa in the centre of town. Yeah. Um, great weekenders or people on holiday can use. So at the moment, we've kind of, the principle of it being open to the public has been discussed with the council at, at length. We don't know entirely what that looks like yet because it's kind of new, but I, what we'll be doing is submitting a sort of operational strategy that will be agreed with the council. Um, so whether it is day passes, whether it's a membership basis, whether it's a mixture of both, um, it will be because obviously our residents are slightly older, the gym will be suitable for slightly older users, so it might attract more um, different ages but mm -hmm. the spa hydrotherapy pool um, could be used by others and then there'll be treatment rooms as well so again not entirely sure how they'll be how they'll be operated yet but uh, mm -hmm. and who will be there but they'll be available for whatever the demand is so and those the intentions open to the public whether that's you book in advance or whatever we'll we'll have to see how it works best yeah I just thought it was worth mentioning um because from a spa uh, perspective, I think it'd be quite nice for visitors and yeah. obviously residents as well. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And for it to be successful, then we really want lots of users at all times of day. So, um, yeah, keen to keen to work with you on that as well. Um, I should add that I, I imagine both Sarah Louise and I would be keen um, to know more about the space that might be available for community projects. Obviously, as Sarah Louise says, um, she manages Visit Tumbridge Wells um, and, you know, we put on a lot of town centre events. So it, that would we're always looking for new spaces that we can put activities on. So that would be um, really interesting to both of us, I think. Um, and I'd be interested to hear more about how you think that might work in terms of, you know, people going in and using that as an event space. Um, and also, as the bid, we do fund quite a lot of the activities activities that you mentioned there so we provide event grant funding for um, a lot of those sort of festivals and as you said um, the uh, the fringe festival we provide sponsorship for that so definitely like to hear about that one that's available yeah talking to um i forget her name so the lady from the fringe um it sounds like a Debbie yeah King. Debbie that's it a really good partnership with what the fringe is doing so we're really excited about that um also i think just to say as I said before, a lot of our current villages are a bit more rural and we don't have the space to kind of incorporate the community in the same way. Um, so we'll be working and seeing what works as we go along, but we're very open to sort of any any partnerships discussions. Um, and we have our scheme in West Byfleet that's coming forward a little bit before this one, which is a bit more similar to this in terms of town centre. So we'll see how that works and take some learnings from that that we can incorporate in Tunbridge Wells. Caroline, just in, in relation to Sarah Jane's um, comment there about space available for community projects, is it worth just calling up the presentation again, the ground floor plan, so we can just like just go through the community space and also like the courtyard? Yeah. Those, those are the, the spaces that are best um, suited to that kind of activity. Yes, let me just get the right screen up. Okay. Right. Can you see, you can see the ground floor plan here. Yep. So the key, if I just zoom in a little bit, we've obviously got the courtyard and the restaurant spilling out from there. So that could be one suitable space. But I think the main one that's flexibly used is we, you walk in the reception here and you see where we've got sort of these jagged lines. The intention is those are walls that can kind of 
be opened and closed. So it could be one larger space here or it could be split into smaller spaces. So depending if it's, I don't know, a community group wants to use a meeting room or there's an event going on that can go across the courtyard, the restaurant and this whole space, it's quite flexible to be used in whatever way way works really. So that's the that's the intention there. Can I just ask, sorry, uh, when it's fully open, do you know how many people it can hold approximately or is that not really? I'm sure we I'm do sorry. know whether I don't know off the top of my <laughs> head. Figuring out how many people we can put in there. <laughs> we, I definitely have that information, but I might have to follow up yeah, um, no after worries. the call. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I am more, I'm interested to hear a little bit more, though, about, as John raised, about how you do see that um, working in terms of the residents and, you know, you know if, if Sarah Louise or I were to put on an event or, you, or you've got the Fringe Festival in there and you've got, you know, a, a music gig going on, um, you, do you think that that fits well with the residents in there and that's going to be an accepted part of that space usage? Yeah, um, I think I think when we're selling this development, part of the sales pitch is how active it's going to be, how how much there could be going on, how interesting it's going to be to live here. Um, we will obviously have to communicate clearly with residents what program of events, but we do this on our other villages. So there's always, you know, different nights for different things. So I think here it would just be a bit more elaborate than some of our other villages if we have a fringe festival event going on. Um, but I think it's a, actually a really good sales point for us. Um, we do have uh, for residents, we have put in a private lounge. So we just go to the one above. We've actually changed this. You can't see it here, but uh, this space up here is now a private lounge that spills out onto a private residence terrace. So there are spaces throughout the development that are private to residents. Um, not not a huge amount, but there's a, um, the lounge here and the multiple terraces that are resident only. Um, and it might be when we get to it, I don't know if, you know, certain times of the day it's residents only in the studio or whatever. But um, I think for us, for it's not cheap to run villages. So the more we can, you know, bring the community in, actually, the better um, for it to be a success and be able to be open more hours. So, yeah. I think it's also worth adding that, um, that the courtyard has also been is also envisaged to host events of, of certain kinds, you know, they, they or certain activities. Um, yeah, so so that is also you know uh, uh, potentially in play for for yeah for some uh, events in the town. Yeah. Lovely. Thanks. Can I sorry, can I just ask a question? Um, in terms of the community facilities, I'm. I'm to introduce myself, I'm Karen and work with Steph, who's on the call as well. Um, and we both work um, for Tree of Hope, so we represent the charity sector and we currently have an office space on Camden Road. Um, and we'd be really interested in terms of use of community space for um, events and activities that we might want to put on as, as fundraisers for us. Um, because it's quite limited in Tunbridge Wells. We've got the Camden Centre, but it is tucked away, whereas this feels like it's going to be more um, so, sort of in the public eye in, in terms of where it sits. I'm just wondering, it looks like a really sort of grand and expensive development um, and how you see the community space working in terms of charges and um, whether they will be you know a reasonable rate that you know people like us can afford to to hire out or whether they will be or be beyond um kind of like those prices and, and more of a sort of private hire um type of approach really um it's a very good question to be honest we haven't got to that level of detail yet so we we need to come up with a strategy with our operations team of how it actually be let out what, what the what is a sort of going rate if we would do discounts for for charity groups um because it's going to be a balance between the demand for the space how much it costs to run it so not sure yet basically but it's it's good to hear that it sounds like there is demand and so yeah we'll we'll have to work on on that a bit nearer the time when it's open yeah i think there definitely will be demand for that space because i think there's a real lack of it um in Tunbridge Wells so just something to bear in mind when you're doing that sort of process is um you know how affordable can you make it for um the community yeah. to use would be great great thank you yeah 
Actually, actually, just to add, um, you're not the first person to ask that question, Will. So, Caroline, just from your answer, I presume we're not going to have an answer to that until quite a lot further down the line. Um, so, I, I've just made a note, Karen, actually, that we'll just, um, as soon as we do have information on that, we'll just let you know, you know, uh, uh, once uh, RVG has been through the process and, and the numbers. Perfect. Thank you. Lovely, thank you. And then we've just got um, a couple of questions uh, in the chat from Don, who represents the uh, town forum. Um, does the building affect the view from Trinity Tower? I know it doesn't affect the view from Mount Ephraim, um, is one. And then his second question is, um, are the ages of people living there 60 plus or 80 plus, or doesn't it matter? I can answer the, the second one there first. Um, so the ages, I believe, will be 65 plus, um, agreed in the section 106. Um, and then to whatever age you want. But actually, if you're a generally, if you're in a couple and one person's over the age, but someone the other one isn't, that that's also OK. But generally 65 plus. Um, and the views from Trinity Tower, I need to go back and look at our, our viewpoint. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but we'll we can come, come back, back to you, you Dom. Thank you. Do we have any more questions for the team? I I was going to say we're um some of you may all just as part of our um consultation we're great believers in reaching out directly to people. Indeed, some of you may have already received um visits from us throughout the um the consultation. We we will um we're planning on on uh, uh revisiting some of the businesses near the site. Uh, so some of you may be getting calls from us again um, and yeah, we'll be asking similar questions and, and actually maybe Sarah Jane after this, I'll just I'll email you the details about the planning application reference number and also just that the generic question which I've asked the people on this group so that other people who aren't able to attend can, uh, you know, uh, can come back to us with any thoughts that might occur to them. Absolutely. And then, um, yeah, we'd be happy to, as the bid, happy to facilitate any consultation you need in terms of going in to see businesses or if you want to set up any other types of meetings, if anyone would be happy to, to help oh, you. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Um, were there other, any other parts to your presentation today? So. No, that's it. Lovely. Thank you very much for joining us again. We um, really appreciate it and it's uh, lovely to, to have the update. How have you found the feedback so far? What are the types of things that you're hearing? All, all positive? Or... Um, we're uh, uh, mixed <laughs> is, is what I would say. There are lots and lots of comments about design, mm -hmm. um, uh, but that equally there are, there are also lots and lots of comments uh, about the importance of and the role that it can play in knitting back uh, uh, the, the town centre together, all, all the sort of positive, you know, the benefits, some of which we've discussed today. So, um, yeah, but we're, you know, we're, we're in, we began our consultation process back in in January, and actually, even though we're still um, the, the applications now in, we're still talking to <laughs> quite a lot of people. So, uh, the the uh, the dialogue continues. Um, so, yeah, any further queries, do, do please come come back to us, maybe via Sarah Jane. That's lovely. Well, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for joining us again. We really appreciate it, and. Uh, do come back in a couple of months and update us again. <laughs> Great. We'll do. Thank, Thank you very, very much. much. Thanks. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, Bye. Thanks, Charlie and Caroline and Gabriel. Um, so